It will not repeat the mistakes we've made in the past. Mistake of staying and fighting indefinitely in a conflict that is not in the national interest of the United States, of doubling down on a civil war in a foreign country, of attempting to remake a country through the endless military deployments of U.S. forces. It is not what the American people want. It is not what our troops, who have sacrificed so much over the past two decades, deserve. In his remarks on the U.S. withdrawal from Afghanistan, President Biden acknowledged that as commander-in-chief, the buck stops with him. But as he faces attacks from the right and unrelenting criticism from the media, it's important to remember that this withdrawal, again, didn't begin under his administration. It was Biden's predecessor who not only set the plan in motion, but who continued to defend it over just this summer. I started the process. All the troops are coming back home. They couldn't stop the press. 21 years is enough, don't we think? 21 years. They couldn't stop the process. They wanted to, but it was very tough to stop the process. Joining me now is David Korn, Washington bureau chief for Mother Jones and the author of a new newsletter, This Land, and Tom Nichols, contributing writer for The Atlantic. Um, one of my favorite contrarians, Tom. I want to go with you first. I find it ironic, right? The one thing that sort of Trump curious liberals liked about him and found unob not objectionable about him was this thing he would say about no more endless wars. They agreed with that, right? And now it is, it is, it is ironic in a way that it's Biden. Let me play this for you. This is Biden voicing the non sort of, you know, white nationalist version of America first, pretty bluntly in his interview with CBS, uh, with CBS. Take a listen. But then don't you bear some responsibility for the outcome if the Taliban ends up back in control and women end up losing the no, rights? No, I don't. Look, are you telling me that we should go into China because go to war with China because what they're doing to the Uyghurs, a million Uyghurs in the, out in the West in concentration camps? The responsibility I have is to protect America's na national self-interest and not put our women and men in harm's way to try to solve every single problem in the world by use of force. I mean, like it or not, Tom, I think most Americans agree with that. And that's why we're pulling out. I mean, the, the criticism here is that Biden is screwing up the execution of an idea that everybody wants to do. Um, and, I, and, you know, I think he's going to have to own that. I, I think this will be a case study in a bad policy execution of a, of a, a good policy uh, for a long time to come, because the more immediate things about are there enough, you know, did we get enough people out? Are there enough planes? These are things that are within Biden's control, and he can't lay them off on his predecessor. But Biden is right that, you know, the American people, insofar as they seem to care about this or when they choose to care about it, have consistently said for three or four, really, if you count the end of Bush's administration, that, you know, to every president, we want you to leave this place. And every president says, well, I, I'd really like to, but I can't because of bureaucracy and alliance issues and military advice and so on. And Biden finally just said, OK, I'm going to give you what you want. And now there are people saying, well, I didn't really want that. I didn't know that, you know, pulling out was going to look like this. Well, there was no version of this that ended differently. There were versions of it that maybe ended with less bloodshed and less horror and less, you know, just chaos on the ground. But the Taliban taking over this country again, that was what, you know, the American public, whether it realized it or not, that's what they said they preferred over staying there. Yeah, and, and, and also the Taliban is not like they're different now than they were before. This is how they are, right? So this is what one should have expected. You know, David, the, the, the thing that is very difficult to listen to is Republicans, you know, screaming that, you know, there should be, Mac you know, Kevin, Kevin McCarthy ripping the strategy, calling for investigations. He won't even investigate the January 6th insurrection. Some other random Republican, Jeff Van Drew, uh, saying Biden, uh, Kamala Harris and Speaker Pelosi all should resign. Rick Scott, the guy who took a bunch of money, uh, his company took a bunch of money from uh, Medicaid and Medicare and TRICARE, serious questions of Joe Biden's removal from office. None of these people care about this. Um, it, it's hard for me to listen to because you had 16 House Republicans vote against more visas for Afghan allies. They didn't want those people to come here. Now they're acting like they care so much about them. You had uh, the Mike Pompeo posing in a picture with the guy who's now running Afghanistan saying, look at this great deal that we put together. This was Trump's policy and they loved it. Now they're deleting all of their tweets. And, uh, and uh, even Trump is deleting his 
There it is. There's Mike Pompeo. Your thoughts, David. Of course, Trump last year wanted to have a summit with the Taliban on 9-11 at Camp David. And, you know, people thought, well, you know, he finally was talked out of that. You know, for 20 years, the American public has been fed nothing but lies. I hate to say that, nothing but lies about Afghanistan, about what we could do there and what we couldn't do there. You know, you referenced this earlier on in the show, the story that Washington Post did in 2019, Doug Lute, who was the Afghan czar for both the Bush, George W. Bush administration and Barack Obama, in 2015 told government interviewers, we don't know what we're doing, we have no clue, we're devoid of a fundamental understanding um, of what's happening in Afghanistan. And he was guy in charge. And so now we, we get to this point where, um, you know, none of those Republicans were speaking out now, and many of the Democrats actually too, never cared about the steady flow of lies. It was, I have to say this, was bipartisan. It happened during the Obama-Biden administration as well that Joe Biden was part of. So I think, you know, we have never had an honest debate, an honest discussion in this country. So we're not prepared. To, ha to look at what's happening now, which is horrific. And I feel for the Afghans, and I do think there are questions about the implementation of, of this policy. But we've never given a real damn, collectively as a nation, about what's going on there, about the war, even the warriors who served, who come back to silence and without much coverage in the media that we're all part of. Um, it's, um, and to, but to see the Republicans now trying to exploit the lies, the ignorance, the, 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 the uncaring, just to score political points while Afghans are truly, you know, in a, in a troubled condition. You know, I, I want to say, Joy, I'm surprised, but I'm yeah. not. Yeah, surprise is dead, along with irony. I mean, look, the RNC had a piece up that you now get a 404 a page error that was touting the withdrawal, right? So it's kind of difficult to see it. I, I just want to know what is the, what's the uh, over under on how fast the pivot goes, Tom, from we have failed the Afghans to, you can't bring 20,000 of those people here. They're Muslim, right? Well, that's a sucker bet because it's already happening. Uh, you know, there are Republicans already saying, can't bring those people here. Um, you know, they, that uh, you can't flood the United States with these uh, terrible immigrants. Um, and, uh, you know, the, the idea that the Republicans were like, hey, I mean, that out of this is as predictable as a sunrise. Part of the problem and I think this is the problem that Biden faced, and, and I think really I'll even say that Trump faced. The, the American public pretty much wanted to make decisions about this war based on wherever they think their political opponents weren't. Right. And their biggest concern was, well, if the other guy might get credit and this is something that makes me look like I'm agreeing with somebody else, then I've, I've got to pick the other thing. And, you know, the American the American public does not have a stable set of preferences about this other than a kind of general reflex of getting out. I'll, I'll take issue with David about one thing uh, about the lies. You know, people like General Loot said this stuff in public. The, this wasn't like, you know, some secret conclave behind the doors of the Pentagon. And the American public sort of shrugged and went, OK, well, but, you know, there's no more terrorist attack. and. Um, it's all being done by volunteers, and I don't want to think about it. I'm, I have, you know, I have TV to watch, and yeah. you know and that I, is on, that really is on us. And the reality is, the way you know about it is that after we got Bin Laden during the Obama administration, most Americans didn't give Afghanistan another thought until right now, when they're looking through their politics to see how do I need to feel about this, based as you said on where your politics are. Just like with the vaccine, it's just bananas. It's where we are. David Corn, Tom Nichols, thank you both.